All right, what's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR coming at you once again with another video. And by now, everybody has heard that Bluepoint Games has joined the PlayStation family. This should be a quick video. Um, yesterday, I did a Twitter space uh, where I discussed uh, Bluepoint Games being acquired by PlayStation. And um, shout out to everybody who came out to the Twitter space. Um, that voiced their opinions and gave their input and shout out to everybody who also just just was there to listen um, I uploaded that Twitter space to my channel yesterday if anybody missed it you can go check that out uh, because it was real good just hearing um, everybody's input uh, from the community and hearing from people you otherwise wouldn't actually hear them uh, speak about their thoughts because you know Twitter we're just reading uh, each other's tweets and you know, typically podcasts week to week, we're just hearing um, from podcast members and maybe one guest per week. So that's what I love about Twitter spaces. You get to hear from people you otherwise wouldn't and get to hear very uh, different and diverse thoughts. So go check that out if you haven't. OK, so we talked about it in that Twitter space, but I just wanted to give my uh, opinion um, and my thoughts on this acquisition. Um, because, you know, in that Twitter space, I wanted to hear from everybody else. I didn't want to be the main one talking. I want to hear everybody else. That's the point. So, yeah, let's uh, let me just give you my thoughts. So they're under the PlayStation family now. And this was uh, leaked or, um, yeah, I, I guess you could say accidentally leaked a few months ago, even though I don't think it was an accident uh, when they announced that they were acquiring Housemark, One of the PlayStation accounts also put out this post that PlayStation had acquired Bluepoint. So we knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time um, because that post was taken down and deleted. But like you don't have you don't post something like that by accident. You don't like mock up a whole, you know, graphic of PlayStation acquiring Bluepoint unless it's something that's pretty much nearing the end of the agreement. I guess the timing was just wrong and, you know, maybe they had scheduled, uh, you know, because a lot of them use like third party, um, third party websites to like plan tweets and stuff like that. So that's probably what it was. They, they put the wrong date or something like that. So, yeah, but we knew it was coming was was the point. Um, and this is like the fifth studio acquisition for PlayStation this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's been Nix's, uh, Housemark, Fire Sprite, and then Fire Sprite just acquired a smaller team of like 40 people named Fabric and Bluepoint Games. Um, and then, and then like Team Asobi, Team Asobi is not necessarily a new studio. It's the restructuring of, of Japan studio. So they're kind of new, but it's just a restructured and refocused studio which is still good. And then we know that there was the big Insomniac acquisition a couple, uh, what was that, a couple years ago? Was that last year or a couple years ago? It might've been like two years ago at this point. Um, but this year it's been essentially like five studios. So as of right now, PlayStation has like 20, I, th I think it's, a, it's about 20 uh, development studios and like three of them are, two or three of them are like support studios, right? And I think... This is this is this is an answer to PlayStation shutting down a whole bunch of studios during the PS3 generation, right? That's what I think this is. Because if you remember, you know, obviously PlayStation wasn't doing so well during that generation. They had to sell off studio, they had to close studios, sell off a whole bunch of assets, close, um, you know, sell off some buildings. You know, things were bad for them that generation. Uh, during the PS4 generation, they bounced back. They did extremely well. And now during the PS5 generation, they're kind of like getting back what they lost. They're counteracting all those studios uh, that they had to close. They're getting back what they lost because they had to close Zipper Interactive. Um, they closed Evolution Studios, uh, Big Big, uh, Gorilla Cambridge. Um, and yeah, recently was Japan Studios that's been restructured to a Sobe. Um, Man Manchester Studio. I don't even remember what that was. Uh, Sony Stu uh, Liver that Liverpool studio. Yeah, they they had to close a bunch of studios around that time. Not all of that was during the PS3. Some of that I think leaked over into the PS4 days, into the PS4 era. But yeah, they had a lot of they had to close a lot, right? So now they're counteracting what they what they lost because um, you know they're doing so well now. They're doing extremely well. So I think PlayStation is a is in a good space 
with as far as like the studios they they own now. One, I'm not one of these people who likes to speculate and conjure up in my mind and all this wishful thinking about who else they should acquire. I'm not really like like this 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 this, this conquer mentality, right? That people have as far as like acquisition, like they just want their favorite um company or publisher to conquer the industry and 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 pillage every little uh publisher or developer that's that's out that's out there i'm i'm not i'm not for that okay i'm not for this conquest that that everybody seems to be on it's it's a little bit weird to me i'm for like acquiring studios that make sense right if if it's if it makes sense or if it fills a gap under your umbrella um, the, the studio does something that one of the studios you have doesn't do. Or if you're saving a studio, for example, uh, that otherwise may not be good without you. I'm okay with, in, uh, I'm okay with it under those scenarios. Like I, that's why I was okay with the Xbox Bethesda deal because Bethesda games weren't doing so well. Bethesda wasn't doing well, right? Like Evil Within 2 di- sold m- significantly less than the first one same thing with dishonored dishonored two so less than dishonored one um prey flopped um and uh well even wolfenstein two so less than wolfenstein one and then that wolfenstein young blood that that flopped so their games weren't doing so and those are all games i like so i'm gl- i'm actually glad microsoft purchased them because now i'm more likely to get sequels to that to those games because that's what i want so microsoft bailed my bailed uh bethesda out as far as I'm concerned. So I'm okay with those type of scenarios. Um, and P- I know people are talking about like, you know, uh, the uh, Ember Lab and Lucid Games because of Twisted Metal and, and Kana and all that stuff. I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not really concerned. I, I, I'm okay if it makes sense. Um, I could see those things possibly in the long run, maybe even PlayStation buying some, uh, since they own Evo, I could see PlayStation possibly looking for somebody to make fighting games for them because it makes sense. Um, and Herman Hulse and Jim Ryan have said, like, even after this Blue Point acquisition, the typical answer that everybody always gives, uh, they're always open to adding more developers, you know, to the PlayStation's, to the PlayStation um, uh, banner. So, you know, they're, they're always technically open to it. It doesn't mean they're always actively looking. Um, so yeah, I think PlayStation is is in a good place. Um, as far as what Blue Point is making next, according to reports I've read, it's I've I've read several different reports. So I've I've definitely read that they are working on a new game, a, an an original IP, original content, right? But then I after that I also read that they are apparently are working on a new IP, but. I guess, a sm- and they're only a team of 70, but apparently a smaller team might be working on a re- uh, on a remake. I don't think they're going to completely abandon remakes, and nor do I want them to. But I've been somebody who's, who's said, I want them to, to work on something original because I want to see what they're capable of. I don't want them to just be expert Xerox machines, where uh, an, an expert copy machine or an HD copy machine where they just take games and 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 make you know and don't get me wrong their their remakes are amazing they make the best remakes in the industry but I don't want them to just be a remake machine I don't want them to just be you know Kakashi Sensei just copying everybody's abilities you know like they they we don't know what they can do right we we could there's a there's a lot of unknown there's a lot of untapped potential if we don't see what we could get, what uh, what's original that we could get from them. I always like look at look at it like, what if you know Guerrilla Games never moved on from Killzone? We wouldn't have got Horizon, you know. Like you, and there's a whole bunch of examples of studios. What if they never moved on or never took a chance um, from and strayed away from something that they kind of like uh, lean to? And what was their, uh, you know, their proclivity in the past? You know, you got to see what you're capable of and, and try new things. And us as the players will only benefit. So that that's my thought on that. I do want them to eventually, like, yeah, remake something again. But 
I would also like them to make something original. So if that means that PlayStation, if they have to do, do more hiring um, and expand the team um, at Blue Point, then, you know, do that. So, uh, yeah, good acquisition. Um, I don't think there's anything else I have to say um, other than that. Um, and, yeah, I don't, I don't look at this as an arms race between PlayStation and Microsoft. I will say that I do think... Uh, I I will say that I do think that all the Xbox acquisitions expedited um, PlayStation's uh, decisions on acquisitions, right? I, I think PlayStation was going to do these acquisitions anyway, but I think um, all the Xbox moves might have expedited it or made it somewhat of a priority, I will say that. Um, but it's not an arms race, and um, I don't think neither one of these, uh, you know, neither... PlayStation or Xbox needs to be like, oh, who are we going to get? Oh, pick them up. Oh, get them. Get like, it's it's dumb. And all the, like I said, all these people on, on Twitter whose main focus is Xbox picking up another publisher or Sony picking up another, like all, all of you are dumb. I'm, I'm just being real with you. Like something is wrong with y'all, like wrong with y'all head. OK, y'all are y'all are more. So I, I see some people talk about acquisitions on the daily more than I see them talk about games. And you can't tell me, oh, acquisitions means games. Acquisitions may mean games in the long run. Sure. In three to four years, depending on where they are uh, at the time of the acquisition. But it doesn't mean immediate games. It means games in the long run, games in the future. So it's weird that y'all y'all seem to be a little bit more excited about acquisitions than you are about actual games right in front of you. Y'all talk more about acquisitions than y'all do games. It's just weird. It's, it's like, it, 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 it's I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just very weird and, and odd behavior that this is, they just want this like, this mass, this massive conquest happening in the industry. Like, listen, let these publishers let a lot of these developers be independent. And I'm talking about from, you know, I'm talking about both Xbox and PlayStation. Let a lot of these publishers and, and, and developers be independent. The last thing I'll say is um, what, I, what I do think PlayStation needs is some, a few studios, a, a few developers that work on dub, something like AA games that they can release a game like maybe every two and a half years because a lot of these PlayStation developers, they work on AAA games and we see them like every four and a half, five years. We see them once a gen. That's not acceptable. I'm, if, we, if you're putting out one game a gen, that's a problem. Like, no, you need to figure out, you at least have like, you, then you need other developers for, you know, to release something in between to be stop gaps or whatever. But even, even if you have those, I, I still don't think it's okay for a, a team to be releasing one game per gen, one game per five years, right? Especially when these teams, when these studios have multiple teams on them. So I'm gonna get out of here. Those are my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Um, hit, the, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.